Welcome Raiders to another Raid Shell Legends video and in this one I'm going to be doing my reaction to the Plarium exclusive. Two major updates, the Cerilla and Ash Raid Shell Legends are basically talking here. I mean, There's my first time watching this. You guys wanted this, you guys wouldn't leave me alone. So here we go, we're going to actually uh, react to this live because I've never seen this. I don't know what it's about. Uh, I'm guessing... On the title, it says two massive updates, so it's probably going to be patch rebalances. It's probably going to be Doom Tower or Hydra or maybe the Great Void. Or maybe some nerfs to champions. Who knows? Let's see. Hey guys, I sure come out you today. Can you guys actually hear it? No, you probably can't hear it. I got to click on this for you guys to hear it. Wait, no, actually, you should be able to hear it. Technically. Shadow Legends, yeah. I am not alone, ladies and gentlemen. I am joined by the lovely Cirilla, community manager, lead at Plarium. Cirilla, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. It's been a minute. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And hi, everyone. We, we, we have the hard-hitting questions first here, okay? Who's your favorite champion in the game so I can highlight them in the background? Don't know what I was expecting. Because I never know what to do in the background of these interviews. I'm like, um, Fire Knight? So who you got? Oh, first I thought it, it was a really tough choice. I mean, we already we already have like more than 800, I think, champions in the game. Yeah. <laughs> they keep coming. Uh, they keep and coming. Uh, it's just damn hard to pick uh, one. I'm going to say Bigun. Bigun. Uh, that was my first legendary. Yeah. Bigun, huh? Mine too. Whoa. Oh. No, was, uh... Is it because he's a big carry? I'm, I'm curious. Why, why, why big on, huh? Why, why? Okay. <laughs> Here, let me put, let me put the Wi-Fi on so the camera syncs up with the audio correctly. Because last time people said it wasn't synced, which means I would have to close off my cam and then do it again. Professional, professional uh, streamer, YouTuber here. Sorry about that. Um. I, I forget her name. Uh, she oh, bro, I clicked the wrong one. Balanced and became stronger, and nobody still cares about her, but whatever. <laughs> Your mother. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, really, I forgot. Tila? But, uh, Tila Gorman? No, no, I, I really forget her. I'm forgetting her name, but okay. she's wearing a mask. She is? And, um, she was really weak at first. She's a legendary? She is a legendary. She was rebalanced and then... Um, faction? You got a faction uh, for me? Uh, this is a fun game. <laughs> Dark Elf? Oh, oh, Astralith. Astralith. Yes, yes. Boom. <laughs> the viewer. She is cool. Yeah. And she has a salt leader, which she fills the turn of all allies by 15% on her A1. Which is really cool. I think that she's a she's a good call out. She's a sleeper. She was my first legendary, but then I got Bigan and uh, didn't care about anyone else, <laughs> and I'm still using him uh, a lot just because, uh, like, he's a family. I can't just abandon a family. Well, you so. know what? We're running a little blender in the background, so Bigan fits in pr beautifully there if I have him built. Uh, so he can join the blender comp of Farrakhan and Skullcrown and Tormund while we uh, while we talk. So we didn't hear as much as this is uh, great. Maybe, maybe we should put myself. Least. Give me uh, a second. Maybe I should put myself so I'm not in front of Ash, so I can kind of be part of the interview together. I think this would be pretty good if I go like this and move myself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the? That's not my cam? There's another cam? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> it's not moving my cam. It... At... Okay. Okay, now it is. What the fuck? Dude, I don't know what that was, but I... it was trying to move my whole screen and YouTube. Bro, today's been a weird day. Mouse movings, things happening behind the scenes that I'm not even doing. Yo. I must be haunted, but here we go. I think this would be a lot better because at least I can talk to both of them in, in a way. We're, we're not here to talk about, to play the guessing game of Cirilla's favorite champion. We're here to talk about all things. I actually wanted to kind of throw to you, uh, you know, primal shards, mythical champions. I have a billion questions, but why don't you just tell me uh, or start wherever you want to start. Uh, whatever you kind of want to open this uh, this chat up with. We've been monitoring what people are have been saying about the mythical champions and how uh, the community has been really hyped up about the whole thing. So we thought that uh, we might have had a bit of a falling out in terms of communicating the whole feature and probably 
properly addressing the issue of introducing these champions into the game and fitting um, them into the whole like system. Uh, so we thought we would uh, talk about this um, in the video, uh, and that might come across better uh, than we would like. You know, uh, just uh, throw out uh, a text format of explanation somewhere. Where I wanted to start is uh, from the changes that we uh, implemented uh, last week into the game, uh, which had to do with um, uh, the s modifications to the mercy system involving uh, mythical champions, and then uh, we reduced uh, the price for uh, shards, for prim primal shards, by adding them to regular offers. Uh, I don't think how regular they are, considering the fact that uh, they just have been introduced into the game, but uh, gotcha. my message is that this is not it, and we have uh, a whole array of other things uh, that we would like to happen in the game that would improve uh, the feature for players. Thank you. First. Okay, so... I'm going to give my input here. So this is what happened. Mythical champions were a very good thing, actually, in my opinion, were an interesting thing to the game. Um, you know, like, so if you can't pull voids, right? And you want to eventually farm up mythicals, you know, primal shards and primal quartz. You can, to a degree, right? Um, it just takes a long time. Now, a lot of end game players, people who spend a lot of money, people who want to compete at the highest level, they saw this and they were like, no, like... I've already spent all this money trying to get Taras Mariska and all these other legendaries, plus two, plus four. I'm not going to keep putting tens of thousands of dollars on a yearly basis just because there's going to be these new champions that will be the next best thing in Arena. And that's all they care about is Arena. They don't really care about doing really too much PvE content. So they were like, nah, nah, nah we're pulling out. So a lot of people were like, I'd rather do something. I'm not going to tell you what they were doing, but they did something with their accounts so they wouldn't lose too much in the long run. And some people were like, well, I'm just going to take a break from raid and maybe later on I can come back. And when all the price adjustments have changed, when primal shards are like $2 a piece, maybe I can come back and spend lots of money, right? Instead of being like right from the get-go because people get FOMO, they see all these packs and packs and packs and thinks, I got to buy it now because who knows if player doesn't doesn't sell it later on. So, that, you know, people get kind of controlled that way. But you always got to tell, tell you with Plarum, they're always learning, right? So you can't always jump the wagon every single time. Yes, I've missed a lot of summon, summon events or other situations like Guaranteed Mishinaki. And people, you know, I cry a little bit, but not really. Because the game is a challenge, right? So um, overall, the concept of the champions were cool. And I think they were, I know what they were trying to go with, Mythicals, and what they were trying to do. It's actually a very interesting way to progress the game, like in terms of adding new champs and stuff like that, instead of just adding more diluting the pool, right? So when you dilute the pool, people get the, the player base gets mad. But when you add more power spike, the player base gets mad. So it's like, bro, you can't you can't literally please everyone. At the end of the day, it's like it's cool if all the end game whales and krakens leave. The people who are finally late game will eventually become the next end game players, right? So but I, I totally understand there's some people that, you know, they're fans of your a viewer or something or a, a long-term player. And they're like, oh, he's leaving. Then I'm going to leave too. I'm going to play another game. And I get it. It causes the it causes a very disrupt in the community. Instead of it being like a, a wave up and down, it actually just splits everybody in half, which is not healthy at all. Um, but I clearly, Playroom has realized, you know, like I said, they always do good things. It's, it's just the implementation. I'm sorry to take a lot of time on, on this video. But it's it's so true. They have a lot of great ideas. The game is so good. But it's the way that it comes out every single time. Playroom always shoots themselves in the foot. 80% of the time. So they need to really talk to people, like maybe us, or other people. But they don't want to let us know because, of course, embargoes and people leak stuff out. I understand. I understand they have to do it as a company. But it's like, then talk to your big dogs. Talk to the tier threes. Talk to people who you know you can trust. You know, it's like, but whatever. First of all, just touching on the communication, obviously, I've uh, you know been talking to, to BJM a bit behind the scenes and stuff like that, and I know you've seen the community feedback, so I wanted to thank you again. Uh, you know, whether it's good news or bad news or any news or whatever, uh, just love when there's an open line of comms. So again, I really appreciate you coming on here and, and answering some of the questions that we do have. Uh, regarding Mythical Champions and Primal Shards, I got to ask the first, <laughs> the first question that comes to mind, and that is 2X uh, Primals. 
But I called no that, by the way. 2X Mythicals. Are you going to be doing any 2X Mythicals? Because I'm not going to shave until you guys do. Uh, me too. <laughs> the short answer hey, is... What does she mean, huh? Because there simply are not uh, <laughs> too many uh, Mythical Champions in the game for now. Uh, we will keep gradually releasing them and then uh, consider uh, launching some kind of an event like that. Yeah, because uh, so it's not a hard you don't want everybody to get every single mythical champion. Because okay. then so the, you, is, you basically okay. collect them all, I mean, right? We can move on, but, but essentially there's only, what is there, six or something right now? Or so it feels like, five, six. Uh, yep. So you just don't want everybody to get them, <laughs> basically. Pretty much. That's you the just, point. You don't want everybody to collect them all, and then there's no reason to like to, to, to want primal shards, basically. I, exactly, I said that. That's my question. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just it'll give us a little bit more time okay. and let us uh, just pour more of them into the world of Valeria and uh, then... Um, some kind of an event uh, is like like that is going to happen. So mythical champions, generally speaking, do you look at that update as a a success so far? What do you think? Some people are like, wow, they're very underwhelming. Others are like, oh, they're they're you know they're interesting, but they're not. They don't the their OPness does not justify the cost, I guess. Uh, and then others are saying, kind of ignoring them until the prices can come down. Again, you have had some movement in the mercy and the in the cost in that direction. Others are like, I don't want to open a primal shard, and you know because I could get a rare champion that's a campaign farmable. So there's all sorts of opinions out there. Uh, mythical champions should they be better? I didn't mean to. I don't want to stop too much of the video, but. Why don't you get when the myth when the primal shards open and you get a rare? What if it was an empowered rare, like a plus one apo or a plus? They're, they're the only way you could get it, right? And if you pulled an epic during, like, let's say, you know, special events, you get a plus one epic. That'd be pretty cool. You can't really do that. You can't empower them through the through the system normally. But if it came out of a primal. It would make people be like, "Hey, I don't, I wouldn't mind getting a plus, you know, two apo, you know, I wouldn't." People would be a little bit more like, "What did you get? I got a plus three this rare, a plus three. That would really change up wanting people wanting to pull these, right? Not the end game player, but like it, it opens up a little bit more avenues than they are. Well, uh, we hear and see a lot of opinions. Uh, they differ. Some players are saying that they should be OP. Others are saying that uh, no. no, they shouldn't. No, uh, we are some. No, if they're OP, they will break the game. Uh, toward the, uh, they should be that they void should... champions. Should be OP because voids are so hard to get. Primals or mythical champions should be a unique champion that's on a Lego status that could be customizable based on builds and what you needed to do. It's basically a Lego, but the thing is, a lot of the Legos that are in the game right now are not balanced to become 2023 edition. Mythical champions are all ready to go. Like, their kits are literally, like, top of the line, Brogni, Duchess level, right? They're high up there, and that's what these primal champions should be. Very powerful legendaries. They shouldn't undermine uh, all the years uh, of... Uh... Prog I, of the progress that players uh, have been making in the game. Uh, we, what we wanted to do, our main intention was to expand uh, this pool of possibilities uh, to play with um, the metamorph mechanics of these champions. Uh, so no, we don't think that they should be uh, too overpowered. And this is why we are not... Um, um, letting uh, to we are not letting develop uh, two sets of artifacts because uh, that would bring them obviously closer to being uh, too good. Uh, well, I mean not too good, but too yeah. OP again. Yeah, yeah. too OP. Um, everybody in the game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, we'll just keep gradually uh, releasing them, uh, not with the, at a very uh, fast uh, pace, uh, like one, two per month. Uh, we think would be enough, yeah. uh, but uh, we will be introducing. So and that's, is, about, uh, really that's about that's about twenty four champions a year. Uh, to Mythical champions get champions in the game. Uh, Twelve to twenty four. You know, uh, throwing in more resources. Okay, you mean like quartz and stuff like that? Is that what you're referring to, basically? Yeah, there are a couple of places uh, that uh, we are. Um, not considering already because uh, this has been uh, discussed uh, and uh, 
and development and will uh, soon appear in the game. Uh, so uh, the Hydra Clash. Uh, first, uh, we are going to add more primal cords uh, in chests. And also uh, we're thinking about adding uh, mythical uh, tomes uh, to those chests. Okay. For now you can get them uh, only in events and tournaments. And uh, soon, uh, yeah, the, the Hydro Clash itself will become more appealing because you'll be able to get more uh, quartz from the chests. Uh, also, the question that may follow is about the cadaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, was, that was my next question. Cadaver. You, know, you read in my mind, <laughs> you okay. You going to ask about that. This Corpulent. Uh, next week, uh, fingers crossed, if all is well, uh, there will be another release, uh, version release of the game, and uh, with it, uh, we are going to nerf uh, or rather fix Cadaver, uh, and uh, namely his uh, A1. Uh, we're gonna put a 200k uh, uh, cap. I called that! Damage. I called it! I literally said that in one of my videos. I said, yo, cap it at. 100 or 200,000 max. I literally said that. A rare should never be hitting for billions or millions of damage. I don't mind a rare hitting me for a fucking 200k. I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, I deserve to die if a rare hits me that hard, right? But dang, dude, that oh, I literally maybe I should work for Plarium. from his shield. Gotcha. So, gotcha. This yep. is something that will ask you to uh, see how it plays out in the sure. end. Sure, yeah. Uh, I feel like, I mean, I can speak for myself on that one. I am happy that you're doing that. I'm sure people who went out of their way to build that team and upgrade those champions will not be. Uh, that's a question. That's a question. I guess that's probably the nature of the beast to some extent. I'll be fair. Yeah, yeah. Hydro Clash hasn't been like super uh, popular, at least in, in my audience. Are there going to be additional ways? I guess part of that's because of the part of that's because of uh, Corporal and Cadaver and Infinity Shield teams. Uh, some you know complaints on matchmaking and stuff like that as well. Are you further optimizing Hydra Clash from where it is right now? Uh, furthermore, is there going to be other ways in addition to just Hydra Clash uh, that you know that you'll include? You know, like maybe like Hydra or whatever other areas of the game. Yeah, uh, regarding the rebalancing Hydra Clash, I'm sure uh, our game designers are onto that. Uh, they are looking at all the ways that match matchmaking may not work in properly in uh, all the areas of the game, but I don't have anything specific to say in that regard just yet however uh, regarding uh, other ways to uh, get primal ports one of them is going to be live arena uh, we are going to be adding uh, primal ports throughout chests in all the tiers hey hey that increases the the reason the the real reason to push live arena not just because of your area bonuses but now because you can get primal courts there that's huge. You can so you get gear, you get air bonuses, and you get shards for doing the same content. Yeah, that's more resources, man. That increases the chances of people wanting to do more live arena. So um, okay. this is something also to look forward to. Uh, also, one of the non-obvious ways in terms of um, getting mythical champions or primal courts well in this case it's about mythical champions which we don't want to just um, uh, give players more resources to build mythical champions from uh, we are also going to introduce that uh, permanent fusion Ooh, okay this is some juicy uh, info uh, okay rosin. sorry go ahead yeah <laughs> similar to rosin yeah uh, no no <laughs> be nice you don't have to agree with her, but at least let her finish her sentences. So uh, now we already have a permanent fusion for Epic and then for Razen, and this one's going to be for a mythical champion. And of course... Hey, hey, didn't I say that? They were going to eventually give us one chance for one mythical champion. And people are like, player would never do that. I told you. People thought it was just because the two primal shards they give us are two mythical whatever shards. Oh, that's all. That's your chance to get. No, I knew eventually they're going to have to give you a chance of trying to get this. Because you want to incentivize going, hey, I got myself a mythical. I want to get more. Right? It's like a little bit of a drug. Um, 
it is uh, suffice to say that uh, it's not going to be easy well because it is a mythical champion uh, but um, you will be just uh, introducing um, a lot of ways for players to be able to build the champions the champion over time okay uh, wow okay. that's that's good news was was that champion the permanent mythical fusion that's coming to the game first of all any idea when are we talking like in a couple of weeks or are we talking like by the end of the year or you know any any idea at all there from what i know it's uh like by the end of the year definitely but yeah. probably uh no not like right away actually it's like, it's next week oh so. well golly yeah. okay so a permanent fusion that's going to be hard to get uh Mythical champion. You may have already seen it. Her. Name. Okay, so it's going to be one of the Halloweens, then. It's going to be one of the Halloweens. No? Okay. You'll see. First of all, two questions. Part one is, you guys keep saying in your... Okay, wait, 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 wait. We know about the mythical champion Spider Lady, and there was another mythical champion in that, that teaser video. So wait, is, is that one of those champions going to be something you can pull from a shard, like they're adding it to the pool? And then the other one is the fusion. It's probably what it is. Your little uh, update videos on the on the YouTube channel that there's going to be all this new hard content coming and you're going to need these champions, guys, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you also drop the line of like, don't worry, we're going to give you a free legend, a free mythical champion. So where's that freebie? Is that the fusion? Is that the permanent fusion that you're referring to? Or is there another freebie? I'm still waiting on my free mythical. <laughs> Cirilla. <laughs> <laughs> Keep waiting, bitch. Before I forget, uh, we also oh, these that edits are so good. Mythical champions uh, desperately needs to be looked at. This is Sigfrid. His uh, survival survivability needs uh, like a rework, and we're looking in, in that direction. Uh, as for uh, other ways to get a free champion, um, there is some huge content coming up, uh, and okay. we are looking to. Uh, get it out by the end of the year uh, if all goes well um, so this is uh, even bigger than the Doom Tower Whoa! it's going to provide a lot of content you gave me my title Cirilla even bigger than Doom Tower really a lot of content wow. to holy moly even bigger than Doom Tower wow you're getting my you're getting my juices flowing here. This is exciting news. Uh, similar to how you can get... Hey, Ash, where are those juices coming from? Just wonder. Ask him for a friend. To Lydia from Faction <laughs> yeah. You can uh, also get a mythical champion in uh, this area of the content. Wait, what what uh, area did you say again? What was it? Ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a try. You time it's just that uh, we want to let it out into the world by yeah. uh, um, dressing it in a proper format you know how we make all those great videos with uh, wonderful visuals and, with hunter uh, with hunter and all the edits and stuff yeah shots I know. at yours truly i get it i get I don't it really want to spoil that. i'm not fancy enough for you i get it to break yeah. the news yeah. so we got uh, something bigger i can't believe you said bigger than doom tower that is lofty cirilla that is lofty because doom tower is the best update you guys have ever came out with in the opinion of yours truly uh Primal Shards, Great. why do you include rares in Primal Shards? People really did not like the rares. Being yeah, why? Why Sacred not just epics and, like and legendaries? They should be the best. Like and Sacred. Then, uh, void Shards and Mythical Shards, they uh, should be approximately of the same value. Uh, it's just that uh, they provide uh, uh, different champions in terms of how uh, they could be utilized in the game. And uh, we didn't want from the start we didn't want to they didn't want to make ancient shards obsolete so they came out with primal shards which is a whole nother way to gamble right technically either money or saving your resources as a free-to-play player and they also wanted something else to you know give you more stuff to summon for summon rush since these points are going up the points inflating right for champion chase summon rush dungeon divers we all know those points are getting retarded right so they really wanted to make people who are smart and save their resources for the right time you're gonna get those points but if you're always summoning your ancients and you're using your primals and blah blah blah, you have nothing so it's just basically making it tougher which i totally understand i told you raid is like real life you have to learn how to manage your resources and the more tougher it gets you have to be more strict and more disciplined 
primal shards to um, you know cannibalize yeah. the importance of the sacred shards. Okay, I understand that. I it was a I'm not gonna lie. It was a big bummer to see the rares and be like. And my first primal was a war maiden Cirilla, and I'm like, ah, campaign sorry. farmable rare. That's really painful. So that really sucks. But at the same time. I guess one way to think about it is like, man, they, if they were if there were no rares, it'd be a lot more uh, premium, let's say, expensive, aka. Uh, but they did. You did say in the initial post for now. You said we're not going to include uh, voids in primals for now. Is that something that you're just like, it's imminent that voids will someday be added, or is that just like you're leaving it open for the future, but it's no immediate plans? Yeah, no immediate, no plans for the. Uh, yeah. not distant fu distant future but uh, we may reconsider this uh, okay. it's like you know the whole process is very dynamic and we may uh, look in different directions while developing the game so who knows okay okay appreciate it but back to the new content this is this is good stuff we've been we've been fiending for for new stuff obviously uh can you tell us absolutely anything? Like, will it be a dungeon? I guess you can't, right? I mean, you've pretty, you've shut me down. You've shut me down, but you did break the news. I'm excited. It's a huge area okay. of content. It's a like big ocean of content, but- Ocean? Uh, yeah, Ooh. we'll see in good time. Ooh, ocean. Okay, okay. So, uh, my my question regarding the, uh, geez, I'm trying to think, is there any way I can get anything out of her, guys? Is there anything? Am I missing something here? One tiny question. Tell me, do you demons bleed? Uh, I think that in terms of uh, the new content. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Just something I thought of. Uh, it's not Great Void. Okay, it's not Great Void. Okay, uh, all right. It's not the void tower that everyone has been talking about it's something else what about great void <laughs> no 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 don't get me there <laughs> <laughs> okay the only things in the game right now that are hidden still you know four or five years after the game was launched is the last faction and the great void that i can think of unless i'm missing something uh oh, and it's both surprises they're both surprises we're getting to the end of the game finally all to all you know 16 factions Right, we're at 15 factions now. Remember when dwarves didn't exist? Sylvan Watchers didn't ex Well, Nyrisian Elves, right? Also known as Sylvan Watchers. And the, Sil and the Shadowkin didn't exist. It was just literally the three, the three uh, Talarians, the Gallon Pact, and the Corrupted. That's all it was, right? But now we have the Nyrisian Union, or Nyrisian, whatever, what you, however you want to call it. But now we also have the Great Void coming out, which, that's all there is. We finally have all the dungeons, right? Every single dungeon that was part of the map, everything in Arena that we've been waiting for, everything in Doom Tower we waited for, everything in Clan Boss is finally going to be here. Dang, we're really, it took this long to get to actual the end of Rage Shadow Legends. What is it going to be? And is there anything, anything else coming after? This is Great Void. It's been in there for a long time, Cirilla. It's been in there for a long one. Is it, is it going to be... It's not that yet. Okay. I, I made... Uh... Let me, ask, okay, so, okay, we, I asked you as much as I can about the new content. We'll have to wait and see. I do want to ask you this. I want to ask you about uh, all the quality of life stuff, right? So, first of all, you can see by my inbox right here, Cirilla, that I am, this must say something about my personality type because I'm sitting at 400 out of 400 in the inbox, right? So, I can't even, like, raid anywhere or it's deleting something or whatever. Uh, I say all Hey, Ash, if you need a gear cleanse, I'm really good when it comes to enemas and clearing, you know, I have a cleaning business. <laughs> if you want me to clean your gear, trust me, I'm pretty good at this. I have 12 stars when it comes to it, so don't let this happen to you, man. Don't let this happen to you. Well, that to say that it's because my artifacts are also full. So let's start with artifact storage. I mean, you guys keep releasing awesome artifacts vis-a-vis -vis the forge, vis-a-vis -vis different areas of the game. Uh, can you, can you please, is it, I am such, I'm, I'm not, I'm a nerd, but I'm not that big of a nerd where I can understand coding. To me, it's just like, why don't you just have a coder go in there and just change a parameter to 10,000 artifact storage. Boom, done, everybody's happy. Is it that easy? I will look for you. I will find you. Uh, can you guys increase artifact storage is my is my long-winded question. Well, the short answer is uh, we are increasing 
uh, are um, the storage for artifacts, accessories, and champions for all the three categories. Uh, I think it's by the end of the fall, uh, and we are adding 200 slots to each. Oh, so, cha ching! Yeah, Dude, this is 1500? Uh, yeah. Addressing your question about what. Did you guys know that Raid Shell Legends back then only had 700 artifact space? And you had to use mules, which are champions or chickens that wore gear. Then we got it to a thousand and people complained it was not enough. Then we got to 1300 and people complained it was not enough. Will 1500 be enough? I highly doubt it. Maybe you just got to get better at gear cleansing your account. Why can't you just uh, throw in like another billion uh, <laughs> additional slots? Yeah. It, uh... Um, it's not an easy. Uh, you have to take into, into consideration a lot of uh, things uh, about the capacity. Of, Servers uh, and stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. I figure there's something there. But that's really, really good news. I know people are going to be thrilled about that. What about, uh, so 200 to everything, artifact, accessories, and champion storage. What about blessings? People hate polymorph, uh, Cyrilla. Uh, any thoughts on, on that? Are you happy with where Polymorph is? I don't hate right? Polymorph, I just think it's uh, not unfun. Really, uh, we tweaked it. And it's unstrategic, too much RNG. We still see that uh, it's not performing uh, in a satisfactory way. So we thought that we would uh, tweak it even more. And that is planned for like the beginning of next year. Uh, what we were thinking about is making it proc once per instance. And uh, that would help uh, to, you know, um, oh, it's like a one-time sheep and then that's it. You can't sheep someone no more and tag team no more in live arena if it's a long fight. It's just one-time sheep off the blessing. That's it. Hey, that's not bad. But when someone has like four sheeps, you still have to go through all of their four sheeps and then they're like no more sheeps. It will slow down the game, but it won't cause infinite loops or, or crazy RNG where you just want to break your keyboard or your phone, so... I think that's actually fair. I think that's a pretty good nerf, you know? So that way, if you want to invest into it, it's going to slow people down, but it could actually kick them as well. But it's not going to just keep, you know, if someone has multiple six stars and they have multiple blessings, you don't, have, you don't need no accuracy to land it when you have a six star. It's unresistible, right? So you need no ac. When you, when you have a four or five star, you have to build ac on your Python. Who's going to do that, right? Who's going to do that on their Python? This makes sense because Python doesn't have any... But... You know, Mighty Uko or maybe UDK, you might do it and build a little bit of act. But now, if you have a six star, it can't proc over and over. It just procs once. Even if you even if you have a six star, it doesn't. You don't have to put no accuracy on the champion, so it's good for the build and it's good for the blessing. I think that's a pretty good balance, honestly. It's gonna be still super annoying when everyone has six star polymorphs everywhere, but I think that's a pretty good nerf. It's good. It's in the right direction. You get, uh, some uh, effects from the existing meta in the game. Uh, we know we all know what matter we are talking about, uh, but yeah, this is uh, happening in the next several months. Okay, all right, okay, that's 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 good to hear. How about uh, how about all? I mean, you probably I don't know if you watch all our videos or anything. I don't want to be too uh, presumptuous, but I mean, you got to hear everybody complaining about the. You know, yeah, it's cool that you release new champions. You know, we dig it. I think that overall people like new champions. Uh, all that being said, though, is what about all the crappy ones out there? Or ones, we mentioned Rosin Scarhide, for example. I don't need you to comment directly on him. But, like, I love Rosin, right? But he's 91 speed. He's a legendary, <laughs> Cirilla, you know? Like, what about all the mediocre or power crept legendaries and epics and voids? Because when you pull a void legendary, man, you want it to be a good one. If it's a bad one, you feel like, there it goes. I reset my mercy and I'm doomed. Uh, rebalancing. Are you guys going to up the uh, the cadence a little bit? It's been like five months since you've rebalanced. Yeah, uh, it's good that you mentioned this, that uh, there was a period of time, uh, and I'm sure you remember it, when we would regularly uh, uh, rebalance a batch of champions like every month or yeah. every two months. Yeah, what happened months. to that? and uh, then uh, the pace slowed down a bit because uh, we uh, the team that is um, special that specializes in rebalances uh, worked uh, on uh, 
like other champions, new champions, mythical champions. Now we are gradually coming back uh, to the pace where uh, we'll try to rebalance uh, these several champions every month. Okay. And uh, this will start from That's good the to know. beginning of next year again. And the first ones uh, are, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Fortis and Angar. Yeah, I like that. I li okay. I th <laughs> Fortress already got a buff. Wasn't enough. Angar, people have been saying Angar needs a buff for a long time. Now, if you were crazy enough to fully book an Angar and fully bless one out, you could probably do some work with it, let's be honest. In live arena or maybe tag team arena. But classic, you're probably not going to use Angar. And let's be honest, where are you going to use Angar? Gould at the Magma Dragon? Cool story. There's other people can provoke as well. Epics. Where else are you going to use Angar? Doom Tower full auto hard Doom Tower waves? Maybe, but even then, why just use use Seer or some sort of instant explosion, you know, poison explosion or some sort of like, you know, one shot champion that just like Baron one shot at the waves and stuff? So why use Angar, right? Where are you going to use them? Iron Twins? Dragon? Fire Knight? Like, where are you going to use this champion? So we definitely need Angar to get a huge buff, in my opinion. I honestly, I told Plarin what they should do is make his A2 hit a little bit harder. And make his A2 give AoE counterattack. There you go. Now he's a clan boss champion. Now he can be used in tag team. He can be used in live arena. He can even be used in classic, honestly. He's a really tanky champion. Don't sleep on him. He'll provoke you forever. You'll never get a turn again. <laughs> if you build a good one. So hopefully they, 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 they hear about that. But you never know. They might just change his kit completely. We'll find out. I like that. Fortis and Angar. Man, those are two of my my least favorite. Actually, I think that Fortis could be amazing if he was fixed, aka balanced properly. So that's really cool. What about uh, epics? Are you guys gonna touch on epics and rares? It feels like some of them have, you know, the more legendaries. Frankly, and to your credit, I mean, Sun Wukong is amazing. Artak was amazing. So you keep releasing these awesome free champions that frankly- Hey, don't forget about Newt. Like Newt, for example, like Power Crep Septimus. Like, you know, as these champions fall off a little bit, are you uh, are you thinking about going and touching up, especially some of those epics and stuff like that? Uh, well, I think yes. Uh, it's just that we first want to focus on legendaries and then uh, maybe once in a while we would uh, ask our game designers and uh, players have a really vocal uh, opinion about that uh, once they go um, in uh, on the translation I'll translate it basically Prime doesn't want to buff all the epics it makes the game too easy makes you not want to spend money what they rather balance the legendaries where people are trying to pull anyways and invest into right I have tons of legendaries I still don't use because they're not really you know up to date like a tomb lord or like a valkyrie right they're not like that high level like i have a netheral only use them in faction wars i have a fushan only use them in faction wars i have some champions i would love to use in live arena or other areas of the game but they're just not strong enough they're, they're not that level of duchess or, or something higher right so um basically that's their more than whatever cerilla is saying they're basically saying the nice way is look we can't just buff all your epics for you unfortunately because then it's just going to make epics too strong and then they would be stronger than most legendaries uh so you know good looking for some decent epics get some void epic uh, void epics but yeah you got to invest into legos because that's what this game's about community platforms and express their opinion and uh, on which plat uh, champions uh, should okay. be uh, tweaked, uh, but then again, um, justified opinion and uh, with a very good argument uh, so that we could review it and decide uh, who we're going to go for next. Yeah, you guys. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but that's the answer. Pretty yeah, much. I would love to see you guys start working a bit with the uh, with the community. Obviously, the community would not dictate how you develop your game, but, you know, there's some guy, as you know, there's some tremendously... Uh, <laughs> unbelievably uh studious uh, uh students of the game i should say like saf it comes to mind you know from hh gaming network like man that guy is insane the way he looks at you know the next level so it'd be cool not just saf but other people like him if you started taking their feedback a little bit in terms of suggestions and and whatnot uh that could properly balance some of these champions without making them broken or, or you know disrupting the the balance of the game so that's cool this is a, a massive one uh Cirilla, and i don't know if you have an answer uh for it but 
Uh, speaking of epics and rares, do you guys think there's any plans to uh, to allow empowerment there as well at any point in the future? Uh, no, I don't think there's an answer for that. Well, I feel like I have to ask because that's like the number one thing. I, well, not the number one. I'm always rambling about everything, right? But that's one that I think would just be so cool, right? All right, so I have to I have to ask you one more time. Any other hints? We talked about the big feature that's bigger than Doom Tower. You heard it live. You heard it live. No more rares. No more epics. No empowerment. Uh, any other hints at any new content coming to the game? Maybe, you know, maybe either that feature or anything else, you know, that you're planning, that you're working on roadmap-wise. Uh, well, yeah, one other huge thing is Clan Wars. And uh, there are not going to be anything like uh, the current CVC tournaments, uh, clan versus clan tournaments good, good, that good. we have right now. Uh, it is something uh, completely different. And because this is a very complex feature, we don't want to rush uh, with uh, you know uh, anything. We have to really thoroughly work on every single detail and make sure that uh, it's uh, done really well before before we release it but uh, uh, this is something that we're working on actively yes this is insane okay so to be clear the clan wars which i've been asking for since i started playing this game i think it would i think a clan wars done right could give another five years of life if not more you know to to raid shadow legends that social dynamic is so huge you know Great. so so to be clear that clan wars was not the same big feature uh, that you were talking about earlier. No, it's something else. <laughs> is that is that? Do you think that's going to be this year, or is that kind of TBD on Clan Wars? It is. Uh, it is next year. Next year. Okay. Probably Q1. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. No commitments uh, on that one. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Next. Year. Well, I'm I, I'm old, so I'm patient. <laughs> I don't know how my viewers will feel like, but I as long as I know it's coming. And I would, I would, even this was going to be unpopular to say with some of my audience, but I would encourage you guys to delay as long as you have to, to nail it to your point, you know, because I feel like that's something that basically Ash is saying your implementation and stuff in Raid Shadow Legends always hits, doesn't hit the nail, man. You always, you always trip and shoot yourself in the leg. You have great ideas. Tag Team Arena was fine, but the beta was too short. We told you, even the content creators were like, look, it's not ready. And Player was like, it's ready, throw it out there. Taxi Marina came out, people hated it. No one wants to do content for it. Okay, Live Arena came out, what did we say? Yo, it's gonna become slow arena. What happened? Matches, people started doing toxic stuff, like building champions where the match takes forever. People would sit there, instead of actually surrendering, they'd let the match keep going, right? It became slow arena. Now. It's become a little bit more balanced now. They put like bots and stuff like that. So now it's a little bit more like who goes first or who or who gets locked out or who gets nuked first. Live Arena's been changed a little bit. But we're basically what Ash is trying to say is put more time into it. If it takes more time to be released, do it. If it takes another two more months, it's okay. We'd rather do more fusions and fragment summons as long as whatever this end game or important content that comes to raid is good. We don't want to deal with all these patch and repatch and turning off player and play, turning it back on, rebooting, rebooting everything, servers going down, and just because of an implementation that could have actually fully been worked on. The balance needs to be there. Everything needs to be there for it to, you know, because if it's awesome, that will be huge. If it's not, it will be a big disappointment right so anyway anything that i didn't ask you about this is my my cheap interview question of the video anything that i didn't ask you about the more good news you can share i feel like this has gone very well personally it'll be well received with the uh with the because we've been dying like i don't want to use the s word but things without having any idea of what's coming things feel maybe a little on the stale side a little bit you know so this is actually great news uh that all this is coming yeah. Is there anything else, quality of life, small, big, that, that's coming that you can tell us about? Well, a couple of other good things uh, is that uh, we are going to add permanent super raids to dungeons, uh, you know, okay. in replacement to, to those uh, 
events that we uh, turn on right now from time to time. Uh, so that uh, will address a little bit uh, the issue of the time is spent in the game. Uh, also, the artifact ascension reroll. Uh, we're gonna uh, let uh, uh, let players uh, reroll the bonuses that you get from artifact ascension. And oh, that's huge! Okay, so we get artifact ascension reroll. Did you get crit rate damage gloves? And you got the ascension crit um well, crit rate instead of crit damage. And you want a double crit damage? Now you can reroll to get that chance. It's not bad. Or maybe you got flat attack, and you're like, damn, I got crit damage gloves with flat attack instead of attack percentage. Now you can try to reroll for it. Hey, that's pretty good. But the question is, is it going to be free or is it going to require another ore? Coming, I think, uh, also next year, like in the first half. Well, that's uh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, what about <laughs> this? Is like the, the, probably something that nobody cares about except for me, but because I'm dirty and I bought all the champions I want to buy or whatever. But what about that little refresh button on the life tokens? You know what I'm saying? Uh, the token like trader, Nick, and, and stuff. The token there. trader that was supposed to be, that. that was supposed to have new champions rotated every week, every month. It has not changed for almost a year. They said it was supposed to be stuff there. There's nothing there. Uh, like give us some more in there or what <laughs> that's uh, like we can leave it out uh, that's a painful question but uh, i'm actually going to go with this question next year and uh, uh, next week and uh, talk with the uh, team lead of game designers and demand an answer from them <laughs> okay uh what about epic empowerment and like life token shop refreshes do you have any news on either of those items because epic empowerment would be awesome and so we're getting some updates to those uh, <laughs> to those life token uh, champions. Well, to be honest, uh, we haven't discussed this with the team. Uh, I know that players have been uh, discuss have been talking about this largely, but uh, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. Uh, okay. And uh, actually find out what the game designer uh, designers think about that. Okay, that's fair. So no good news, but no bad news. <laughs> Just no news on that. Right. On that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, listen, Cyril, you've been incredibly generous with your your information and your time. Uh, I want to thank you a lot for coming on. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say? Not really. Just thank you very much for uh, hosting me and uh, uh, making it really fun too. We try. It's a game after all, right? At the end of the day, right? It should, it should be fun. Uh, Don't thanks. forget about it. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed, yeah. indeed. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, again, uh, we'll uh, we'll hopefully do it again some sometime. It seems like there's a lot to talk about, so I, I'm looking forward to having you back on again. Yeah, thank you very much. No problem, guys. That's going to do it for the interview. A lot of stuff to get excited about, honestly. Uh, let me know how you guys feel about everything. Uh, we're going to wrap it here. Thanks for... Hey, thank you, Cirilla. Thank you, Ash for HL Legends for making this video. And thanks to myself actually sitting here for 50 minutes <laughs> for doing a reaction for you guys. Um, what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think of this coming, what's coming to raid? It's not the what's coming to raid video. Of course, we're going to do a reaction to that. But at least we know a little bit of juicy information of what players are working behind the scenes and what they you know might do and what might not do. Um, overall... I think uh, they've actually learned a lot from this whole primal situation, mythical champions. You think they would have learned a little bit more from the previous mistakes each year, right? They've done, there's a lot of stuff that, but I think this is probably the biggest one eye opening. And like she said, like they're community managers, they can only talk to the game developers, and the game developers decently know how to balance and not balance. Sometimes things are a little unfair. Some things are really, really good. Um, but I think you can't always make everything good in Raid Shadow Legends, unfortunately, because there has to be a power, small spire, power spike. Plus, it all comes to the players knowing, you know, cooldowns and ability, base stats, gear, what's optimization, things like that to actually really utilize all the way, because otherwise everyone's just a free-to-play casual player. But um, overall, I'm pretty stoked about it, and hopefully things go in the right direction and things start to go slowly a little bit higher for, for Raid Shadow Legends. Um, but yeah, it's been a little bit stagnant, but overall, hey... I'm pretty happy about it. I'm, I can't wait to see that fusion for the mythical champion. Let's see how hard it's going to be. Anyways, thank you Raiders for watching this Ray Shadow Legends video. Go support Ash. Support our uh, community managers. They try really hard 
you know, to keep everybody keep going in this game, especially the, the, the art community that's separate from the game and then the game community itself and try to synergize everybody together. But anyways, thank you, readers. I'll see you guys in the next one. Tell me in the comments below what you thought, and I'll see you guys in the next free-to-play or racial video on this channel. Bye-bye.